In this video, we're going to see some examples of two-dimensional arrays and how they compare with one-dimensional arrays. So I can declare a one-dimensional array, which we've already done. And I'm going to call it A. And I'll initialize it to 1, 2, and 3. And then I can create a 2D array. I'll call it B. And to initialize it, it's going to be a little different than how we did the original array. We are going to give it an initializing list, but that list is going to be a list of arrays. So our first array is going to be 1, 2, and 3. And then the second array, 4, 5, and 6. So we have a array of arrays, a two-dimensional array. So let's see some of the values in A. So we'll do A1, well, let's do A0, and then we'll do its address, so that's A0 and address of A0. And we'll do this for each of these. For index two, instead of that, let's do a plus two, because we can use the array as a pointer name and dereference it. So if we add two and dereference it, that's the same as array index two. And for this address, we would just say the address of a plus two. And we need to do index one here. So let's run this and double check that everything's correct. So 15, we have a bug. Oh yeah, we don't need to do the address here. And all of these need to be cast void pointers. That's just to get rid of those warnings. So we have an unused variable, but that's okay. Let's run this. And you'll see that even though we did two a little bit differently, you can see that those line up. It, it, these are all four bytes apart. Okay, now B0 is a little trickier. So B is our two-dimensional array. So let's see what happens if we just do what we did above. And we'll just swap out B and A. So this is the same thing we did above with array indexing and then pointer arithmetic. But now we're actually using B. So you'll notice that argument is an integer pointer. So when we say B2, what exactly are we talking about? If we run this, you notice we get some, some weird answers. So B0 is actually a reference to, actually, we don't want to add two. That could be where we're getting from. Yeah, so we're still on 19 and 20 on this first piece. When we do B0, that's actually where the array is, not where the integer is. So you can see we get kind of some junk output. So let's delete that, but the address is good. So we'll keep that for reference. 
and you'll notice the difference here we have a difference of 12 which makes sense because it needs to be big enough for four integers our integers are four bytes here so how do we print the elements in b0 and b1 So let's do essentially the same thing we did above here. Except we're going to add a second index saying that we want B0 and so forth. And then we'll do the same thing uh, we did above. Just with, with that last one, we'll use array indexing to get to that particular value and hopefully that makes sense to you how that works so here let's do one and then instead of using the array index we'll use pointer addressing so we're gonna it's gonna be at b plus two but we need to dereference that and then we need to D reference B and add two to that. And then this particular parameter would be B plus two. And we need to add the second column here, or the, the first column to, to indicate what row we're talking about. Okay, so here we've done B. We're doing the three items in the first row of B. We're going to use array indexing for the first two. We'll use pointers for the second one. And I think that's too many parentheses and that's not enough parentheses okay let's see if we can get this to run okay so we have one two three and you can see that those indices are where we would expect starting at 20 we have 20 24 and 28 so four apart let's do the same thing for b1 except of course now we have to change that first column to be zero. And let's see what happens. You'll notice this is still B3 because we didn't change what that is. So how do we tell B what that is? And it, and it turns out this is B plus zero above here. But what we want to check here is actually B plus one B plus one, and then we add two. So we're saying we want to go to the second in, second row of B, and we want to go to the third element. So we're adding one less than the index because we start at zero. Okay, so I believe that should be what we're looking for. And we're printing four, five, six, and you'll notice C, two uh, C, thirty, and thirty-four. Those are all separated by four, starting at the address of B one. Okay. So what this should show you is that you can access into that array using either array indexing or dereferencing the pointer. Now B gives us some interesting things that we can do with it, since it's a two-dimensional array. So I'm going to set a pointer or create a, an integer pointer called pointer. And it's going to be at the address of B zero zero. And 
And there's no reason here I couldn't actually just to make things simpler, just say B, right? Because that's going to be the address of index zero of B. And let me create another variable called total cells. And that's going to be two times three. That's there just because I don't want to have to keep calculating how many total cells there are. And we're going to use that in some for loops. So what we're going to do is we're going to print the addresses of the array via pointer BTR. So and we're going to do a for loop. So II is going to be, and I don't know if we, yeah, we didn't declare that it doesn't look like. So let's declare it there. It's going to be less than the total cells. We're going to increment II each time. And we're going to printf the value and the address of each one. So we're going to dereference what pointer is pointing to. And then we're just going to report what it's pointing to. And here we need to cast that to avoid, to avoid a warning. So let's see what this does. I is undeclared here. Uh, it didn't like that we were doing this. Um, so that's actually incorrect. We need to initialize this to be zero. I think that'll do it. It might not. We might need to go ahead and do that original way again. Hope that worked. But I need to put this in parentheses because it's casting the pointer before the arithmetic. Okay, so let's run this. Here's our values. Here's the addresses. They're all the same. We went through that entire array with pointer arithmetic. So notice, since that array is going to be contiguous, I can go through the entire array. I could even, if I wanted to, and you might want to do this for your matrix project, is I could say, I could write a function that converted two indices using pointer arithmetic to get an arbitrary element from a multi-dimensional array. So we'll add an extra line of output here just to clean things up. 